As you may be aware, last month the ASAPA team released a new report called Getting Australia Active 3. Thank you so much for those of you who contributed towards this work. In this short presentation, Bill and I would just like to take a few minutes to share a bit more about why we developed this resource, what it covers and how it might be useful to you. First of all, the GAA3 is a free resource publicly accessible on the website of the Australian Prevention Partnership Centre, which is the administering grant body for this project. For those of you who are less familiar with the Prevention Centre, it's a national collaboration of researchers, policymakers and practitioners established in 2013, which seeks to produce policy informing evidence and tools to support comprehensive systems approaches to tackling the lifestyle related determinants of chronic disease, including diet and physical activity. It's important to learn from our history, avoid repeating mistakes, but maintain the strengths. Here we see a 25 year potted history of physical activity in Australia in three parts. In the first part on the left, we see the green box, the first physical activity communication on moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity from the New South Wales Chief Health Officer, Dr. George Rubin, one year ahead of the 1996 Surgeon General's report. SIGPA, the little logo on the left, the Strategic Intergovernmental Forum on Physical Activity and Health was a late 1990s predecessor of the current National Physical Activity Network. It seems there's nothing new under the sun. The New South Wales Premier's Task Force coming out of New South Wales in 1996 was the world's first intersectoral physical activity committee. Western Australia, the Act of WA followed on with an even stronger model. Active Living was the final iteration of the Premier's Task Force 20 years on, having been PCAL and then Active Living. So a task force lasting more than 20 years is something to take note of. Move forward to 2018 to see the advent of GAPA, the WHO Global Action Plan on Physical Activity. GAPA and the Australian Strategic Framework on the right, Sport 2030, ushers in a new era of possibility and opportunity after a period of stagnation. That together with the establishment of the Australian Systems Approaches to Physical Activity, a SAPA, in 2018, sets the scene, hopefully, for more action and more progress on physical activity in Australia. The aim of the ASAP project is to foster systems thinking and to support systems approaches to physical activity. To do this, we firstly set out to map and understand the existing physical activity landscape in relation to the adult population and in relation to three Ps. Prevalence, so how jurisdictions are measuring population physical activity and how they differ between them and over time. Policies, how physical activity is being addressed across different sectors and jurisdictions. And programs, identifying and understanding what the major ones are and the large scale interventions in Australia. So one of the first things we did was to hold two national meetings to bring together policymakers from across Australia and diverse sectors, including health, sport, planning and transport, to share information about the three Ps. And these forums revealed some awareness among policymakers about systems approaches, but limited experience in using them, suggesting a need and perhaps an opportunity for building capacity in systems approaches. One of the ways in which we have tried to support this is through the GAA3 and a conceptual systems map, which Bill will present a bit later. Back to the 25 year history again. On the right hand side, the current GAA3 in 2020. Way back on the left hand side, 1996, saw the first predecessor of GAA towards best practice in the promotion of PA in the areas of New South Wales although a state-based review, very much taken up nationally and internationally. 2002, first GAA, GAA1, undertaken at the federal level with support from the Commonwealth Government. GAA2 following rapidly in 20, 2004. We wait until 2017 for a review by Sprinter in the same tradition. And 2020 sees the current emphasis on a systems approach. Some of the culprits remain the same across the 25 years, notably Bowman and Bellew, 
what's new is greater engagement and a systems approach. Hopefully something we'll take note of and put in practice going forward. We've heard that GAA3 takes a whole of systems approach to physical activity. Here is our whole of systems map of influences on physical activity developed by ASAPA in partnership with policymakers and stakeholders around Australia. At the heart of the model, the dark blue core influences on physical activity. In the light blue, the system intervention points. In dark green, the politics, lobbying and social advocacy elements. In light green, the governance and knowledge mobilization components. The systems map allows for a better of understanding of what is a complex issue and allows us to set out the sort of content and solutions that we needed to set out in getting Australia Active 3. The GAA3 has a distinctly Australian focus, but it draws on an international body of evidence. It's divided into five main parts, firstly presenting evidence to help build a case for physical activity, so covering population trends, and also evidence about the co-benefits of addressing physical activity. Before going into rationale for using systems approaches and how such an approach could be used in Australia, and then it divides up into eight separate chapters, um, covering evidence about what works and providing policy focused recommendations across the eight domains of action that you can see on the right of the outline in coloured icons. It then concludes with a separate chapter on strategies to improve equity and finally considerations for building a comprehensive surveillance approach for monitoring the broader physical activity system. So not just population physical activity, but also indicators around policy implementation and program delivery, changes in settings and built environment, and also non-health indicators such as public transport or park usage. And our working group and networks such as NPAN have also helped to gather and contribute examples and case studies that we've interweaved throughout to help bring the evidence to life. This is a snapshot of the structure of the GAA3 as shown on the Prevention Centre website. So you'll see that it's available as a full download up the top as well as individual chapters. We recognise that many of you may not have the time and opportunity to fully digest the GAA3 in its entirety, so we have developed succinct summary briefs to accompany key chapters to highlight the key messages. And you may find these helpful, perhaps in stimulating discussion and engagement with your colleagues in other sectors, or to help with ministerial briefings, for example. We're just in the final stages of editing these, but they will be available on the website shortly. We're trying to get this resource to whoever and wherever it may be useful, so we'd greatly welcome any of your efforts to share and promote it further. Tracy and I thought we would wrap up by gazing into our crystal ball and thinking about the future directions of ASAPA. Here are some of the thought bubbles for the future. We've had some help thinking about the future with some input from you on what the priority should be. That's why legislation and physical activity is the first thought bubble. But other bubbles include knowledge mobilization of getting Australia Active 3, the notion of a knowledge hub and community of practice, a business case for a SAPA, especially around the development of that knowledge hub, Considerations of how ASAPA might support a new national physical activity plan. Revisiting the dark green, the light green bits of the systems map that don't yet have their sections in GAA3, the politics, the advocacy, and so on. And who knows what other innovations NPAN and our stakeholders may identify that in the co-production sense we might go forward and do together. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge that this work and the broader project would not be possible without the funding we've received from the Australian Government Department of Health through the MRWF program and the support of the Prevention Centre, which has been hugely valuable. 
If you'd like to access the GAA3 and any other of our project outputs, you can visit the web link here. Thanks for listening.